Yesterday when I played in that CLG tournament, if you were in the stream or you happened to see the VOD, you probably remember that I had to switch to Karen to get anywhere. The cami pick just wasn't cutting it, I had no idea what I was doing, and just generally felt unconfident and kind of clueless. Now after that, when everything was said and done, I was kind of left feeling disappointed and confused on what to do from that point. Uh, as a person, I'm pretty quick to just give up and switch to something else that might yield better results, especially when I'm already doubting myself. I'm not generally one to stick to things easily, and it takes some real convincing to get me to build up the tenacity to fight through the issues I face when it's so much easier to just give up. In this case, I genuinely wanted to keep playing Cami, but because the results weren't showing themselves, I went to Jury and then Karen to finish things out and to get a few wins on this ladder for the CLG tournament, which ultimately by that point didn't really mean anything. It was just a simple stroke to my ego. And so when I woke up today, I found myself in a predicament. I said, well, I've put so much time into this character and something still isn't fully clicking. And I'm not really sure if I'm on the cusp of getting there or if it's time to just accept this loss and move on to something that fits me better. And this is a common misconception I always have with myself. I feel as though certain characters fit me better because in the short term, I can win on them easily or much easier than I can on Cami and even Karen at some points. For example, Jury feels much easier to squeak wins out with because of things like her V-Trigger, among other stuff in her kit, that generally makes it easier for me to close out rounds or cheese my opponents. Meanwhile, I feel as though I have to play much more solid on a character like Cami because of things like low HP, which ultimately make every hit that you take much more deadly. And so reluctantly, I got on and I did play Jury today. I played about three or four sets and I won most of those games and it just didn't feel right. Sure, I'm winning and that makes me feel good to an extent, although it really shouldn't because that's not a metric you want to base your progress on, but that's a story we've heard time and time again when it comes to me. The character definitely fits my playstyle better, but is that really a good thing? I mean, it allows me to win, but it doesn't really help me improve, it just kind of reinforces the bad habits that I have. So instead of continuing with a character that I didn't really feel like playing, I sat down and thought about it. What about my playstyle works on Jury that isn't working on Kami, and why do I feel more confident playing this new character over Kami in certain matchups, and what are the strengths that I'm drawing on? while playing that character that I'm not using when I pick Cami, And I thought a little bit about when I'm playing Karen as well. There's something that Cami and Karen kind of share in the terms of whiff punish buttons, right? Karen uses stand medium punch to whiff punish a lot of things, which is a six frame move. Cami uses stand heavy punch to whiff punish a lot of things. That's also a six frame move. It just happens to be a heavy, which makes it really good. And they also have pretty similar ranges. So why when I play Karen, do I stand in the correct range to whiff punish a lot of things? But when I play Cami, I don't. I stand way too far out. I don't really get the hits that I need to. And if I do, I just kind of get lucky swinging at the air. The obvious issue is spacing, but the deep-rooted cause is doubt. Self-doubt, defined as a lack of confidence in oneself and one's abilities. I think this is why uh, I play the game so reserved. It's why I live my life so reserved. I don't take any risk. I don't do things that'll benefit me if there's a chance that they'll hurt me. And that's a hard thing to accept, but it's also a hurdle to overcome in both the game and in my life. These games always teach me so much about myself, and I think that's what makes them so great. In the end, it doesn't really matter what character I play. That sense of not being able to believe in myself will follow me until I overcome it. And I just have to stop running away to other options that I think will shield me from my uh, inadequacies, I guess. This video started out as something that I wanted to make in order to talk about how I was going to keep playing the character that I felt like I wanted to play, not that I should be playing. But it's evolved into something much greater than that at this point. <laughs> I just know that somebody out there is feeling like this too, and even if 20 people watch this, as long as one of you feels like you got something out of it, I'm happy with that. These are sometimes things that are hard to articulate. People go through stuff like this, I feel like, and don't know how to express it or are afraid to express it. And so I'm okay with making myself vulnerable to an audience in order to uh, get it off my chest, I guess. It's just crazy how lessons that have started in fighting games in the training mode of Street Fighter V have led to so many revelations in my real life. And just realizing um, my character flaws as a person and how it's not easy to overcome those things that are just so ingrained in you you know like my severe lack of confidence in most things that i do the extreme pessimism that comes with that but in order to get further in a video game as a competitor i 
started to shed those thoughts more and more. And so even if all this time training and these videos don't amount to anything, I will never regret my time playing Street Fighter V. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again very soon.